Hey everybody, I uh, wanted to get on here and do sort of a video introduction to, I'd written a small ebook and while it's definitely not super giant and impressive, I, uh, I wanted to kind of go through chapter by chapter because it's broken down into topics really well that I go over a lot with different uh, new spinners. And I know if you've been spinning uh, for a long time, like if you've been doing anything for a long time, like you tend to kind of forget what it's like when you start. So you kind of forget what the uh, common questions can be or confusions can be when you're first starting out with something. So I don't know, kind of in me writing this because it is just in small sections, it was a really good way for me to kind of I guess re-remember <laughs> different topics that may need to be covered for, you know, if you're just kind of starting out. Because, I don't know, most people, myself included, you start out with knitting or crocheting and that's kind of your introduction to, you know, the world of yarn. And then, I don't know, you may slowly start getting more interested in kind of different types of yarn and you're like, okay, well, this one's a single ply you know, the ones that have, it looks like four different little strands all twisted together. You, just as you're working, you start kind of noticing the different constructions of the yarn. And if you get excited about spinning, you kind of end up reverse engineering your understanding of yarn once you start making it. Bec um, and I just, that's something I thought was really interesting. So that was kind of how I wanted to break this down. It it starts out with just kind of like drop spindle 101. And uh, I don't know, one of the earlier first sections in it is on drop spindle versus spinning wheel, which is what I figured I would talk about in this video. And I don't know that, like I said, now that obviously seems like, well, yeah, one's a drop spindle and one's a spinning wheel, but <laughs> they're actually, it's a common question people have is like, why would I want a spinning wheel versus a drop spindle or a drop spindle versus a spinning wheel? And that's actually a really good question. So uh, I feel like that should be addressed. I just did a video on kind of drop spindle 101, you know, just real basics. Like this is a drop spindle. I did one on top whirl versus bottom whirl. So I'll try to link those here. But I feel like I've recently covered, that's the other thing is I've made so much uh, video content at this point that I can kind of forget you know, like, I feel like it's something I covered, and I'm like, oh yeah, that was like five years ago. I should probably, uh, you know, like, there's new people that might want to know about that at this point, but I have, I know, very recently, as of a couple weeks ago, um, made some videos on different types of spindles. So, today I just really wanted to talk about, like, why would you want a drop spindle versus a spinning wheel, or vice versa? Most people, myself included, started out spinning on a drop spindle and I mean the obvious benefits of that are just it's uh <laughs> it's much more affordable it's definitely smaller it's an easier thing that if you're just kind of like kicking the tires on uh you know I think I'd like to know more about yarn spinning but you don't want to you know have this whole thing that lives in your house like a spinning wheel um a drop spindle is a great place to start with that the basics of a drop spindle is you've got a weight You've got stick and then you've got a hook usually of some sort either an actual hook or like a little carved notch um with the idea being that the weight gets the momentum and the twist and gives some resistance and then the hook is the part that has the fiber that holds it while it gets twisted so basically it's just a very simple machine that uh helps you to get twist into fiber so that it can then run along the fiber to turn into yarn. And I mean, that's the real basics of yarn spinning. I mean, people of course started out with yarn spinning, just like rubbing <laughs> like vines or fiber, you know, plant fibers or animal hair, just against like their leg or, you know, any in their hands, anything to just get that twist. So with the addition of the weight where it can pull, you have something that besides your hands that's pulling away from it, instead of having to get the twist going, you know, literally like section by section, all of a sudden you've got something that will pull away from you so that the twist, it's kind of magical, will run up the, uh, the fiber supply and it just twists up and becomes yarn. 
So that's the real basics of how a drop spindle works. So the pros of that is it's smaller, <laughs> it's much cheaper, and um, you know it's definitely it's something you can throw in and out of a drawer, in and out of a bag. It's much a hobby on the same level, I would say, of like knitting or crocheting, if that's where you're at. Something, that's what I love about knitting. Something that's portable, I can literally have like a project bag, stick something in the bag, take something out of the bag. You, so it's it's more on that scale of uh, like knitting. So if that's what you're starting out with is knit or crochet, drop spindle very easily fits into that same scale of what you're doing. As for why you would want a spinning wheel, it's a different, as I was explained to me by my friend um, when I first started learning to spin, by freeing up both of your hands with a spinning wheel, because if you have a treadle, so you're treadling with your feet, your feet are then doing the job of getting the twist. And instead of it being a start-stop twist, it's a continuous twist. So your feet are doing the job of keeping that continuous twist going, which then frees up both of your hands. Because with a drop spindle, it, when you're just learning especially, you're doing the twist and then you're usually putting it under your arm or putting it between your knees and then drafting. And then you have to wind it back up and then you do the twist and you put it under your arm and then you're doing the drafting. So it's you can see it's much more of a start, stop, start, stop process. With a spinning wheel, once you get the momentum going with your feet, you can just keep going. So there's no start, stop, start, stop. So as you can imagine, that makes just for an easier experience on um, making a smoother, more continuous yarn. Some people with a drop spindle or spinning wheel, um, you know, you, just the nature of the start, stop, you might feel like you're getting a, a less even yarn or just less control over the yarn. So just the main benefit I would say of a spinning wheel is that your feet keep that continuous motion going so that frees up your hands. So um, by having both hands, and of course, like I said, with a drop spindle once, and I've got so many videos on this, what I call it, it's a spinning where you let it drop down to the floor. Um, that's where instead of putting it under your arm and doing the drafting, you're letting it drop down towards the floor and you can get much more of a continuous draft motion that way um, with the limitations obviously being, especially if you're me, I'm a 5'2". <laughs> so when it hits the floor, you know, once, once the, the height between your shoulders and the floor, which is what, like three whole feet maybe for me, <laughs> is, uh, is your cutoff there. So um, that's still, even though it's not, as short of a distance, it's a cutoff. So by using a spinning wheel, I can keep that continuous motion going. By having both your hands freed up, that lets you really have greater control over um, the type of drafting you're doing, whether it's woolen or worsted, which I'll talk about more in another video, or like semi, or if you're doing like a two-ply or art yarn. And if you have my drop spindle course, um, you know, you can definitely do different all of those things I just mentioned with a drop spindle but it definitely takes more brain cells and coordination I feel like it's easier to do all of those you know more particulars with a spinning wheel because you've got both your hands freed up and so you're just your feet go on autopilot after you learn and so you're just focused on what you're doing with your hands um, so that would be the main difference with that. And like I said, you can definitely, you can two ply on a drop spindle, you can thread ply, you know, you can do those things with a drop spindle, but it's going to take maybe a more creative setup or you're really going to have to pay attention or <laughs> you're really going to have to be mindful to not get things twisted or you're really going to have to be paying closer attention to like, okay, how am I, how am I drafting this? with a drop spindle, whereas with a spinning wheel, the main benefit is you're getting much more on like an autopilot with it. You get on an autopilot where you can just concentrate on your hands and get in the flow of what you're doing and spin that way. So for me, I find a spinning wheel gives me many more creative options, easier, 
Then a drop spindle, a drop spindle. I love spinning. My preferred way to spin on a drop spindle is to let it drop down to the floor and I end up with just kind of a nicer, thin, thinner woolen style yarn is what my kind of go-to is with a drop spindle. And while I could do other things, I just kind of have that one thing that I do on a drop spindle normally, and I'm just talking, um, versus a spinning wheel. I feel like every time I sit down with a new project, I'm like, all right, what am I going to do? You know, it's easier for me to think more creatively, I guess, with a spinning wheel. And then the, uh, I guess, other main benefit of a spinning wheel versus a drop spindle would be... Um, you know, just size. And I mean, that also greatly depends on <laughs> your bobbin size, you know, what type of spinning wheel you have, more of an antique spinning wheel or a lace weight spinning wheel, something with really little bobbins. Um, Y'all know I'm a dealer for Spinlution, so my brain is always comparing different models of Spinlution wheels is just how it works in my head. So I'm picturing the little four ounce bobbins on like a lace weight, like Polywog or Echo, versus the big giant like 16 ounce bobbin <laughs> you can get for other ones. So that's obviously gonna be your main benefit of a spinning wheel, um, especially, I hate to say, a spin illusion spinning wheel is uh, you really have much more variety of options of bobbins just to get a continuous yarn, lots of yardage, or if you wanted to do like really funky art yarn or tapestry yarn or, you know, bulkier yarn. I don't personally spin really, really, I'm not like a tapestry weaver at, at time of filming this video. So, I mean, I'm not normally spinning like the big giant art yarn, but I love being able to spin like a bulky weight or a chunky weight because um, I like knitting with that weight. Um, I find it very easy to get my hands into. I like being able to, to spin four ounces or eight ounces together on a bobbin. That obviously it's once again, like, could I do that on a drop spindle? I could. <laughs> I wouldn't be getting very much yardage at a time, though. So it's like, if I wanted to spin, you know, bulky weight yarn, and I'm doing it on a drop spindle, it would, one, just be more challenging, and two, the wrapping it on, I mean, it would end up full, pretty much, like, immediately. <laughs> and so then I would end up with, like, instead of one big skein of yarn of, like, ch chunky or bulky weight yarn, I would end up with, like, lots of little balls of chunky weight yarn, which would totally be great. So that would be uh, <laughs> my main breakdown on why you would want one versus the other. Like I said, most people start out with a drop spindle, kind of get the itch for it. I feel like that's how it goes with most of us. And then you really get to your enjoying the process. And then it's usually not too long before you start making the jump into, um, you know, wanting to get a spinning wheel. And then that leads into what type of spinning wheel should I get? And that's a whole other conversation. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I, of course, if you're wanting to look at the what type of spinning wheel should I get, I have a great, I believe it's a comparison video of all the different models of spin lotion wheels that I have goes over the different treadles, kind of the different bobbin size. Once again, I feel like that's another video for another day. So I'm not going to ramble too much, but this was just real basic. Why you want to drop spindle, why you want a spinning wheel, why you would want one versus the other. If you take nothing else away from it, I would say it's the difference between more of a start-stop spinning and a continuous spinning with the just solely by having the extra technology of your feet doing the spinning versus your hand having to do the spinning, whether it was with gravity or like physically spinning it. Um, so it, it's the flow, the flow and the storage, um, which leads to creative options would be your main reason for wanting one versus another. So anyhow, like I said, that's kind of the um, first little section from... Like I said, it was just a silly little ebook I wrote to kind of, it's more of a guide <laughs> um, for people with new spinning. And I just wanted there to be easy to find topics. And one of them, one of the first sections was called Drop Spindle versus uh, Spinning Wheel. So that's my video to go along with that topic. So like I said, I wanted to go through, I'm going to start doing a series of taking each one of those topics because they were all really good kind of beginner spinning topics. So I was like, well, it's already broken down for me. I already broke it down into topics. So I'm going to go one topic at a time. So there you go. So uh, that was for drop spindle versus spinning wheel. <laughs>